Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical humans reacts and today we are going to be talking about two everyone's two favorite things fruits and paintings it's more specifically paintings of fruits <laughs> yes and uh, just to be clear this is not about oil pastel portraits of Freddie Mercury whoa 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 whoa, whoa. hey hey you can say it no, we're going to go the still life route that everyone tends to hate of images of baskets of fruits, not Ah, uh, yes, yes. The 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 world this the the world's worst art form. Uh this art form began all the way back in eighteen eighty six when the United States government decided to commission seventy five hundred watercolor paintings of every known fruit in the world. <laughs> I am, it, while it sounds ridiculous to have paintings for that many fruits, it does make sense in an era where photography was in its infancy and wasn't the most accurate and the U.S. government wanted to have a repository of information and data. It makes sense, especially yeah. coming from the Department of Ag. Yeah, yes, yes. The U.S. Department of Agriculture hired uh, 21 artists to create realistic renditions of every fruit on Earth. Mostly uh, female. Per, yeah, they were mostly female artists. Yes, that's that very true. Um, the purpose of this was actually uh, for the U.S. Uh, Patents Office, as uh, at this time it was quite common for people to attempt to grow hybrids of various uh, fruits and other plants, patent that, and then start selling their new pseudo pears or whatever it was they were trying to make. And so having a, you know, keystone visual reference for what is a peach, what is a pear, um, was, uh, was uh, essential for, uh, for ensuring, uh, copyright protections and preventing fraudulent copyrights. Mm -hmm. Uh, so once again, it's about money. <laughs> it's all about the money, money, money. But I mean, yeah. these drawings are super beautiful in depth, like they're photorealism at its yeah. finest like the picture of the peach that's the headline of the article i don't think i could do any better than that with an actual no. camera yet alone no. with a watercolor or any sorts my, of my, art supplies my grandfather has grown peaches on his land for the last 15 years i have never seen a peach come off of his peach tree that looks as peachy as that peach <laughs> And I work upon in there. That's another point for me. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's just, it's almost like 100 years of genetic modification. Like, what strawberry looks like that on the inside anymore? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. And oh, that's another thing, too. They they didn't just do exterior portraits. They did the cutaways. Uh, my favorite is the pineapple. Yeah. Um, Just because somehow it still looks prickly. <laughs> yes, like, but also, man. you can really... This is kind of interesting just from a modern perspective. Because you can see how the outside of the pineapple wasn't as uniform or as beautiful. And while it could very much just be this one example here, you tend to believe that this is more of a general representation of what they actually look like. And our pineapples nowadays are very uniform, very even. Like, they don't... Yeah. They're not as bulbous like that. Yeah, and uh, one of the key things is that the artists were under strict orders... Um, not to do any touch-ups or beautification whatsoever. If the fruit you were working with was starting to uh, was starting to rot, you had to show the rot. Uh, exactly, which I think is why, like again with the pineapple, this bottom uh, lower right quadrant is starting to brown out a little bit. Yeah, because it was uh, it was starting to. By the time the painting got that far, <laughs> that was starting to turn brown. So you better show it as it <laughs> turns brown. It's really interesting and shows quite a bit. I mean, the strawberries look beautiful. I like the top cutaway here, the side cutaway. Oh, yeah. The fact of it yeah. on the branch. These were some yeah, talented like... artists. Wow. Yeah, I know. The 15 different renditions of strawberries. Like, uh, yeah. Tell me you had too many of these without telling me you had too many of these. <laughs> You know, I really hope for the artist's sake that she was just sitting there munching on some strawberries while painting a few. Yeah, yeah there's, there's like five that have been set aside on like the pedestal and then everyone's eating the rest. Well. Wow. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, They have examples of fruits that aren't 
even prominent in the United States, including yep. one that was illegal in the United States until 2007. Yeah, and which one is that? <laughs> that is the uh, fruit called the mangosteen, a rare treat in the West. They were banned in the U.S. until 2007 because um, they... Yeah, the Asian fruit oh, flies. Yeah. And Queen Victoria offered anyone a knighthood if they could deliver her one. That is that is hilarious and awesome, and I love it. Which, these yeah, are the mango is... steens, by the way, for yeah. those watching at home. Yeah, it, 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 it is literally every fruit in the world uh, circa, you know, 1886. That was, that was the objective, and they did that. Gotta collect them all for knighthoods. Wow, look at that lemon. That has changed a lot. Yeah, no, it's it's way too long. <laughs> the ban wow, that's a banana? That's even worse. The the square ended banana, the papa papulu, which would you never know, be mistaken from a chiquita. Yeah. Well let's let let's be honest. Let's be honest. Bananas have gone through their own, like, mini-extinction event uh, in the last hundred years, so God, but no wonder this looks like nothing we've ever seen. And look at this lemon, though. Or is that lemon, or is No, that... no, that's more of the Papa, no. I think. Uh... I don't know, I can't read their handwriting, unfortunately. Yeah, I was trying to, but it's kind of hard. Mo most, of it, most of it is just... Etrog. Uh, what the hell's yeah. an etrog? Unless that's what they called lemons before they. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Most mo most of the designation is uh, is government record numbers and then the artist and location. Oh, I'm just an idiot. Wow, that's actually a fruit that is very common amongst uh, Judaic populations. It's called a an etrog. Wow. Little did uh, I know. Interesting. Mitra, yes. See, we're finding things we don't even know exists in here <laughs> because of this database. A hundred and fifty like... <laughs> years after it was created, which is insane. Yeah. But, yeah, this is just kind of a... This is definitely off our normal beaten path of things we would cover in topics, but it is historical. It is human. Yeah. Yeah. It is and human. It, 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 yeah, yeah, and it came it came up recently in a news article, uh, so we figured why not we'll talk about it. And uh, if anyone wants to look at more pictures of these fruits or to get a better uh, example of what this is, the uh, collection is known as the Homological Watercolor Collection. Ooh, there's your homework for the week. All right, well. I think that's a good point for us to wrap up here for this video. If you guys enjoyed watching, be sure to leave a like down below and as a part of your homework what's your favorite image from the collection <laughs> see ya